I'm a big fan of Kaggle datasets, which are often provided as zip files that contain potentially thousands of files. Now, with many data tools, you need to unpack the zip file before doing any analysis. But since version 23.8, ClickHouse lets us query archive files directly. So let's come over to my terminal and we're going to launch ClickHouse Local. And then we're going to load this file from the stock markets data set. And notice after we write the name of the file, we're going to use this colon colon syntax after which we can provide a glob. Uh, which is going to decide which files to select. So we're going to say everything. And then we can use the format one, which just reads the file names. And then we're going to select the special variable underscore file. And we're just going to get five of the files. And you can see it comes back. Uh, it's got a bunch of files under the ETFs folder. So we can see from these results that there are some CSV files inside the archive. But let's now update the query to give us an overview of everything in the zip file. So we're going to take the initial query, we're going to wrap it in a CTE, and then we're going to add an extra field to the select, which is going to split the file by the forward slash uh, so that we get the parts. And then we're going to return the top level files inside the if statement. And then if it's not just a single file, we're going to pull out the directory name and then we're going to, get, we're going to count how many uh, files are inside that directory. And so you can see we get back, we've got a stocks folder that has just under 6,000 CSV files and ETFs folder with 2,165 files. And then at the top level, symbols underscore valid underscore meta dot CSV, just a single file. So let's start with that symbols meta file. So we can, we're going to call describe on the file. Again, we use that colon colon syntax. And this time we're just going to specify an individual file. Uh, and this time, since we know it's a CSV file, we're going to tell it to use the format CSV with names, and then we'll get it to return us the uh, description. And so you can see back, it, com it comes back with a bunch of, of fields. We can scroll up to see other ones as well. And the, the data in here can be joined with the data in those other two folders. So let's delete the settings from the bottom of the previous query. And we're also going to delete the describe and change that to a from. And then we're going to just select select one a row from that meta file. And so we can see back, it comes back. We've got a few different uh, values in here. So this is for the symbol A. Uh, so I, I guess it's Agilent or Agilent Technologies, Inc. Common Stock. And you can see there's a bunch of other information about there, including that uh, it's not uh, an ETF uh, and that it is, I guess, is, this is listed on the NASDAQ or was listed on the NASDAQ at some period of time. Let's now delete the format and the limit. And we're going to uh, import this by into ClickHouse by adding a create table clause or specify our engine. We're going to order by the symbol uh, column. And then if we come down, we're going to add in an extra setting. So this is schema inference make columns nullable. We're going to turn that off. And what it means is that when uh, ClickHouse is choosing a sample of rows and columns to look at, it's only going to make the field types nullable if the sample values for a column contain nulls. Otherwise, it's just going to use the uh, infer underlying inferred type. And so we'll run that and it takes just a, like 0.1 seconds and we've got uh, 8,000 rows ingested. Let's now have a look at the values inside the ETFs and stock folder. So we're going to update that describe query to do that and we'll get back. This is what those uh, or at least the content of some of those files looks like. So you can see we've got a date, we've got the open price, the high price, the low price, close, uh, and then the volume uh, down the bottom. So let's again query that file. So we're going to delete up to the describe, we'll change it to a from, and then we're going to pull out the, we're going to, from the path, we're just going to use this extract all groups function to get us the name of the symbol, which is kind of hidden uh, in the middle. And then we're going to get back two records. Let's delete the format and limit. And um, again, we're going to add a create clause on the top so we can ingest this into ClickHouse. Again, merge tree. This time we're going to use two different columns as our sorting key. And when you do that, you need to make sure you put the brackets uh, around, around them. Otherwise, you will get an error. And then we can run that query. And you can see it runs through like a bunch of the records. Uh, but we eventually run into a problem. And so you can see we get this garbage after int64.0 uh, and then kind of end of line. And so the problem we've run into here is that ClickHouse is inferring that the volume column is an int64, which it is for a lot of the files, uh, but we've run into one file, so in this case, etfs uh, forward slash edow.csv, where it isn't, so it's got a dot zero. Uh, and so actually, I think that the volumes should be integers, and so we're going to just figure out how to do that. So we're going to drop the table prices, and then we're going to go back to our original query, and we're going to use this setting called input 
format, try infer integers, and we're going to tell it, don't do that. So don't try and infer that it's an integer. So it's just going to keep that as a string value. And then we're going to use the replace function after our uh, select star to manually do like the coercion of the type. So we're going to use the 2int64 function on the volume uh, to force it to be an integer. Okay, so we're going to run that and it's going to be processing the records at about 1 million records a second, which is still not quite fast enough for a video. So we'll speed that up and you can see it processes uh, just over 28 million records in 22 seconds. Uh, so now that we've got the data for those two tables ingested, let's write a query to have a look uh, at data between them. So we're going to query from the prices table. We'll join the symbols table to the prices table on the symbol uh, column. And we're then going to find for for a month. So we're going to get the start of month. We'll, we'll see whether or not it's an ETF. And then we're going to compute the total volume of trading that was done. And we'll get a readable format as well. And we're going to do it just for three months. So January 2020 up until March 2020. And then we'll get back our result. And so you can see here the volume of uh, transactions uh, that were being done or trades that were being done. Uh, you can see there's a lot more being done on stocks uh, than on ETFs. And so the next step now that we've got the data loaded is to build an app or a visualization on top of it. And so you'll probably want to check out this video up here where we build an interactive energy usage app using CHDB and the Streamlit framework.